Hello my friends and welcome again to my video channel. Today we will finalize our project. We will continue with the alignment and then we will do some measurements in the RX path regarding sensitivity, that means signal to noise ratio and have a look at the S meter calibration. So let's start. ALC adjustment. The ALC is adjusted through this hole. Here we have the pot for the ALC. Set to transceiver set to 40 MHz CW mode. The carrier control is fully clockwise. So we are running into the limit of the ALC. And when we tune it, uh, key it down, we have approximately 100 Watt. We see the ALC is active. And now we have to align the ALC that the output increases up to 150 Watt or so. Oh, this pot is dirty. Is it necessary to clean it? Okay, not more than 140 Watt. And then we have to, on 28 megahertz, we have to key the transceiver again and set this pot on the pre-driver board for 100 Watt output until the ALC is lit and this is not possible. We do not get enough output power. We have 100 watts, but the ALC is not uh, reacting. We have seen that we cannot get the full output power 100 watt at the higher bands on 21 and 28 megahertz. I tried to set a compromise, but uh, it's not possible on higher bands. Next is the watt meter calibration has to be checked on 14 megahertz. We have 14 megahertz band. The output power is set to 100 watt. And the indication here is also 100 watt. A little bit too much. I have to reduce it. There are two pots for the forward power and reflected power on the SWR bridge. This is a pot for the forward power. key it down it has 100 watt okay so I set it to a little bit less than 100 watts that's okay let's check it on 28 by the way the transistors uh, are getting hot now the fan is not rotating so the output power drops with the increasing temperature Okay, 50 watts, 50 watts, 60 watts. It's more when, as long as the transistors get cooler, the output power increases. The reflected power can be set with the uh, antenna disconnected, but I have to reduce the output power. on 14 megahertz and now the reflected power forward and reflected is now identical that's okay carrier balance adjustment the microphone gain <coughs> and output power is set to zero Microphone is connected, but only needed for PTT function. <coughs> the alignment is the R349, which can be aligned through the hole in the DR7 board. And the output is connected via dummy load, small dummy load to the scope. There is no output power, so any small dummy load is okay. And when I key it, we can see there is a signal. Yeah. 
Okay. Microphone doesn't close. Perfect. And this signal now has to be aligned to zero. That's it. That's the best setting. We have a 20 millivolt per division and no attenuation. So the uh, output signal has really no 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 watt, no milliwatt. It's a very low output power and acceptable. The last step is the CW side tone frequency adjustment or first the measurement. The speaker output is connected to the input of the scope with an appropriate dummy load, 5 ohms. And when I key the transceiver in CW mode, we can measure 817 Hertz. That's okay. Should be 800 Hertz. I do not align it. It can be aligned through, a, through the key uh, connector in the back side, on the rear side of the transceiver with a metal screwdriver. It is described, but it's not necessary. Well, the next and the last step will be a short measurement of the receiver sensitivity on all bands. The measurement of the receiver sensitivity is done in the traditional way. I have a true RMS voltmeter because it's necessary to measure the noise with a true RMS uh, voltmeter, not with a simple AC or millivolt AC meter. It's necessary to have a true RMS. This operates with a thermal image, with a thermal bridge in it. It's the well-known 3400A from Julie Packard. It's a very good one. I have it since, I think, 20 years or so. It's, a, it's the best meter for such a measurement. As long as you don't have a digital, also true RMS voltmeter. Not every digital meter is a true RMS. It's only RMS calibrated for sine wave. Okay, the principle is we first receive noise. What we can hear in the moment, I have to connect the speaker output to the input here with a with a load, dummy load, and in the background we have a. a Signal generator in the range of a fraction of a microvolt. We start with 28 megahertz. We can hear the noise. And when I switch on the signal generator, we can hear the signal. It is still in the noise. It is dot 0 0.25 microvolt. Only noise. And to measure the signal to noise, signal plus noise to noise ratio, it is necessary to connect it to the millivolt meter. I set the output of the AF to minus 10 dB. And when I switch on the, the signal, the increase is when I tune it to maximum. I'm measuring in mode SSB, USB with SSB bandwidth. I can reduce it a little bit. So we are at zero. When I switch off the signal, we are at minus 10 dB. This is signal again. And the signal is measured with zero dot two for microvolt speci specified as 0 0.25 microvolt on, th on 10 meter so on 10 meter the spec is met now let's go to 15 meter 21 megahertz uh, by the way it's important to look for a frequency in the TR7 where there are no birdies heard sometimes this transceiver or on some frequencies this uh, transceiver has birdies and when they are birdies, it is not uh, possible to measure. So look for a frequency without birdies. Same on uh, 21 megahertz, dot 200. No signal, minus 10 dB. That's the noise. When I switch on the signal, 
we have signal plus noise we have a little bit more than so i can reduce it down to zero the signal is 0 0.22 microvolt on 21 megahertz we are at, we are at 0 db and the difference between signal plus noise to noise is exactly 10 db then the next step is 14 megahertz generator is set to 14 megahertz we have no signal minus 10 db when I switch on the signal we have a little bit more then zero so can reduce it we have zero dot two microvolt now rather exactly with signal we have zero db and without signal only the noise we have 10 db less and I switch it off and this means signal to noise ratio on 14 megahertz for 10 db signal plus noise the input signal is 0 0.2 microvolt that's also okay let's go down to 7 megahertz on 7 megahertz mode usb we have minus 10 db okay to reduce it a little bit and then i switch on the signal tune it in maximum and a little bit more 0 0.21 0 0.22 0 0.22 microvolt it's also better than specified with 0 0.25 we go down to uh, 3.5 megahertz 3.7 megahertz without signal minus 10 db and i switch on the signal when i tune it perfect okay i need a little bit more 0 0.2324 0 0.24 uh, microvolt it's also specified 0 0.25 microvolt so no problems and then uh, last step is 160 meter 1.8 megahertz we are on 1.8 megahertz 1.5 plus 300 no signal minus 10 db um, and with signal i have to increase the signal a little bit we are at one microvolt that means 0 0.35 microvolt not 0 0.25 0 0.35 microvolt so let's increase the frequency a little bit go a little bit more up because I think we have a problem with the high pass filters in this low frequency area. The frequency is increased to 1850 again minus 10 dB and now I switch on the signal generator and we have zero best tuning again and the signal is 0 0.25 so we are more sensitive on 1850 than on 1800 and this, this is I think caused by the high pass filter in the receive or also in the transmit path and also when we transmit on 1800 the output power is less than on 1850 so the 160 meter band has a problem at very low frequencies okay but in general we can say the transceiver is okay regarding receive i will close the whole cabinet and make a last comment by the way when you want to hear the signal 0 0.25 microvolt you hear signal plus noise 
and that's noise only. That's what we have measured. We can hear it also in the speaker. And now the promise check of the S meter sensitivity. <coughs> the manual states approximately 30 microvolt for S9. The international standard is 50 microvolt for S9. We can adjust the sensitivity in the IF chain with this uh, trim pot. It can be trimmed through the hole. Here's a through hole in it and can be set in the IF. This pot in the IF has no effect on the signal to noise ratio as we had before. The signal to noise ratio is determined by the first components which, ca which come in contact with the signal. These are, for example, the uh, cable, of course, antenna cable, and it plugs the relay contact of the transmit relay and the first amplifier. Well, if this transceiver has no first amplifier, it has a direct connection to the ring mixer, <coughs> and it is a passive ring mixer. So the uh, first active component is the first uh, IF amplifier on 40 megahertz. This will determine decisively the signal to noise ratio and maybe a later stage the next mixer. But not the mixer and the IF on the, uh, on the output of all mixers, the last IF which we have here. I will check it now with an input signal of 50 microvolt and see where we are. I have set it on 14200, 50 microvolt signal, we are on S9 plus 10. When I reduce it to 30 microvolt, we are rather close to S9 as the manual stated. When we do the alignment and when we are correct, then we have uh, 30 microvolt for S9. But I will try whether it's possible to, uh, to increase it to 50 microvolt for S9. I think it should be better. Now again we have the 50 microvolt signal. Yes. Okay. I leave it here as it is. That's okay. S9 is 50 microvolt. And again, the signal to noise ratio is not affected because it is not determined. Let's uh, feed in a signal with uh, 0.2 microvolt. That's a signal with 0 0.2 microvolt. We still hear it and have the same signal to noise ratio as before. Well, the S meter is calibrated. I will check it uh, on other frequencies now whether S9 is always 50 microvolt. Here we are on 28 megahertz. Same signal, also S9. I will check it again on 7 megahertz. Uh, sorry, I meant 21 megahertz, <coughs> where we have the problem with the output power, but we had no problem with the sensitivity of the receiver and also S9 with, uh, you can see it, half uh, amplitude. Full scale is uh, 100 microvolt, so we have 50 microvolt on 21 megahertz. And now let's go to 7 megahertz. Same result on 7 megahertz. S9 is 50 microvolt. 3.7 megahertz. Same result S9. And we will check it on 1.8 megahertz. We are now on 1.8 megahertz. And you remember we also had a problem with the output and the uh, sensitivity of the receiver at 1.8, so I will increase it to 1.850. We only have a 7 here. Again, it's the, whole, the high pass. It's the high pass is, is a, the problem. And on 1.850, we have S9. You can see it in the back. 
Yes, that's it. The S meter is constant S9 over all frequencies over the whole bands. The linearity of the S meter isn't the best. Well, I will check it or show it now on this on this uh, scale we have now S9 and I will go down by 10 dB 10 dB is 2S units you see what happened again 10 dB up So the linearity of the S meter is cruel, absolutely cruel. <coughs> when I increase the signal by 10 dB, that's okay. <coughs> S9 plus 10, plus 20, that's good. Plus 30, that's acceptable. 40, 50, and 60. That's okay, but below S9 I can, sorry Now we have S9 10 dB down So this S meter can be forgotten for lower signals <coughs> It's only an, an a rough estimation or an indication that there is a signal, not more I can't improve it it's a disadvantage of such an old concept but even with modern transceivers the S meters are more or less only estimation as we call it estimation irons and not, an, uh, not a true meter it's only uh, to indicate that there is a signal or no signal well that's it the S meter in general is calibrated S9 is 50 microvolt the rest is more or less linear at lower uh, amplitudes, for higher amplitudes, the uh, dB calibration is is a little bit better. And now at the end of this project, let's have a summary and some conclusions. What did we do? Band switch was cleaned. The so-called fuse, you remember, the bridged fuse with a wire across it was replaced by an original one. And gentlemen, please, whenever you replace a fuse in such a way, as soon as possible, replace it by the original one. You can't imagine which damage may occur, especially here. The power supply, the PS7, has a short circuit capability of 30, 35 amps, or maybe a little bit more. Imagine 30 amps DC flowing over a circuit circuit board permanently this current is not switched off the power supply doesn't switch off and you can imagine what happens inside this transceiver a fuse is cheap very cheap and you can buy it everywhere nearly everywhere in the world and sometimes the postage is higher than the fuse itself buy a set of fuses and you are on the safe side on the power supply board we replaced the 24 volt regulator for the VCO supply, new electrolytics, new contacts. Uh, one contact was a little bit burned. We got five new 10 turn pots for the setting of the 10 volt and the BFO frequencies. The transmit relay contacts were cleaned. Some uh, One contact was uh, bent back, it was damaged. That was the reason why there was some spark. It got a new secure bracket or a clip and one tantalum was replaced on this board, digital board. The vertical contact pins were resoldered. This is a weak point of the DR7. Two pins for power supply were added to distribute the, the current on, on four pins, not only on two pins. The switch for the external frequency counter was, uh, was removed and bridged on the uh, digital board accordingly and two new tantalum caps also. The PTO, the mechanism of this PTO was completely disassembled, cleaned, lubricated and reassembled. The spring load 
uh, the spring loaded wheels were uh, repaired, that means uh, two springs were added and the PTO was checked but the PTO is okay and the rubber inside this knob, you remember the short piece of rubber made of a hose was also replaced. Bulbs, filter foils were replaced, cleaning were necessary on the PA board, the drifted carbon resistors were replaced and the one toro it was rewound because it was damaged the self oscillation now was gone of the PA but still we have the problem of not perfect output power on 15 and 10 meter filters and low pass and output were checked with the sweeper okay we have the problem on the pre-driver board the uh, setting resistor or uh, trim resistor was replaced we got new screws and threads and rivets for the bottom cover the feet were installed with correct screws. Is it so difficult to buy the correct screws? Ah. Fan was cleaned and remounted in correct orientation with new contacts. You remember? At the end, complete realignment according to the service manual was made. And the final check of the output and especially the RX sensitivity was made. Well, it was one of my longest projects I ever had. And uh, I think on uh, for TR7 project it was my longest. Yes, it was a lot of work to be done, and still there is something to be done. The case is in a very bad shape. The color is ugly, but I do not do anything on it. I think it's not waste uh, worth to waste some money. It's better to take the money and buy some additional equipment and place it around the transceiver, so the color can't be seen. The front panel is okay, that's not a problem. Well, uh, have I forgotten something? Ha, huh, I've forgotten something. You know the song from Chris de Berg, Don't pay the ferryman until he gets you to the other side. You know it? Yes. Now I say, don't open the bottle before the job is done. The owner has sent me a bottle from his homeland and now I will open it and I can assure you I will enjoy it and hopefully you enjoy your new old transceiver as I will enjoy, enjoy this the content of this glass I can't say cheers in your language, I will. I tried it, no chance. So I simply say cheers and stay healthy. I will stay healthy with this. Stay tuned and see you on this channel.